So we're going to jump back into Angela Vanden Bogard's testimony to the post office rise and IT inquiry. And so she says that she regrets not getting to the answer faster, but doesn't say sorry for things she did because she says she didn't knowingly do anything wrong. She says she was blindsided by not knowing about information, for example, about known error logs for Fujitsu and starts directing some of the responsibility towards them instead. Our content is 100% funded by you, so if you do have a few quid spare, please see the locals and Patreon description in the profile and description below. Thanks in advance for your support. Let's jump into the inquiry. One of the five main things you say in your witness statement, I'm going to summarise your witness statement, okay. if I may. Firstly, I think you make no concessions or admissions that you did anything wrong, correct? Well, I didn't knowingly do anything wrong, and I would never knowingly do anything wrong. You don't apologise for your role in any of the events being examined by the inquiry, do you? I think, you know, and I've reflected on this quite a bit, you know, and the, the, the disclosure... Um, that I've seen through this process. There are things that, um, documents that I've seen that I, I don't remember some of them from, from the time, but clearly knowing what I know now, I would give further weight to some of those documents than I did at the time. So they would have more significance. So things that, like, things that I might have missed at the time, then I am, I really regret that. And I wish I'd been able to, to see that back then We've got that phrase coming out and the often used phrase of regret about things which didn't happen rather than sorry for things that did happen, which obviously people sometimes interpret in quite a negative way, quite a passive way, trying to distance oneself from events that took place whilst working at the organisation. But still, knowing what you know now, in your witness statement, you don't apologise for anything that you did wrong, do you? Um, I apologise for not um, getting to the answer more quickly, but with the evidence I had and the, the parameters of my role at the time, I did the best I could and to the best of my ability. What you say is you blame Fujitsu for not being transparent with you and the post office. And um, Yes. That's the third thing you say, you lay the blame at Fujitsu's door. Well, from my perspective, because, you know, we, we'd, we'd set up the... We'd set up the mediation scheme. Um, we had reached out to Fujitsu in terms of being able to get the information from them for us to be able to do the investigations. Um, they put a project manager in place that we funded to be able to access, get us access to the information that we needed. They knew what we were doing, yet we didn't get sight of any Kells. Now, I didn't know Kells existed and nobody that we were working with in the business knew that at the time. What I've subsequently seen through the disclosure and what some of this did come out as we were going through the GLO process is that there were people within the organisation... Within the post office. Within the post office um, that were aware of, I presume, known error logs, but I'm just talking about the service management um, kind of department where they would be dealing with Fujitsu at that level on a daily basis and working that through. Now, that wasn't available, and I certainly wasn't aware of that when we were going through the scheme. That's the fourth thing you say. The first you knew about known error logs, KELS, was in the course of the group litigation. Yes. But when in the course of the group litigation? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure, um, but... And it wasn't the detail of the KELS, it was more KELS. Um, so as... Um, so as we, Andrew, Andrew Parsons particularly was preparing the case and bringing papers to, um, I think it was the PLSG, then that's, that's probably the first time. Um, and we started to have some queries coming in from, from the legal team into me and then out to my team to be able to go and find some information on it. But that was the first time. But I, I really can't put a date on it. So Angela Vanden Bogard here clearly seems to be laying the blame for the events of the post office scandal firmly at Fujitsu's door on this one. You say, um, lastly, that you had no knowledge of any material bugs in the Horizon system until the second site investigation reported in July 2013. So at the point that uh, we were feeding um, information to second site for the construction of an interim report, then we disclosed two bugs um, and that was a surprise to me. I, I wasn't aware of those up until that point. 